guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Janet, and if you're new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here and supporting my channel, and welcome back. All right, everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have lost over 100 pounds following the ketogenic diet, and in today's video, I am going to share another what I eat with you video. I will share with you um, my favorite meals and I'm kind of going back to basics right now. In this video, you will see what I mainly had when I was losing weight on the keto diet, okay? So it took me over a year to lose over 100 pounds and I was guilty of eating the same things every day because I liked what I was eating and I knew that it was 100% clean keto, so I just kind of stuck with it, right? So my first meal actually today, we are going to start that in a little bit, but I already know what I'm going to be making and it is one of my favorite meals. But first, we are going to have some coffee, you guys. You guys know how I make my coffee every morning. Um, I will link a video on it here on how I make my coffee, but I make it the same way every day. I usually have one cup of coffee per day. So I'm going to be going and making my coffee to start off the day, you guys. Happy Friday, everybody. I hope everybody had a fabulous week and are ready for the weekend. Um, we are actually heading out. Jimmy and I, um, it's our anniversary today. So we are heading out of town and we are going to Calgary, which is a major city in Southern Alberta here in Canada. And we are going actually for a little mini holiday for a couple, three days, you guys. So that is what we are going to be doing. We are leaving probably later on today, but I am going to have my meals at home and so I'm excited to share with you guys I plan on vlogging our trip um, kind of like what I'm eating what we're doing and we'll see what kind of trouble we get into let's be honest I'm going with Jimmy so there's going to be some sort of entertainment factor I'm sure um, so anyways that is what we are going to do today so I hope you guys had a successful week and Let's see what my first meal will be today. All right, you guys, let's get started on meal number one. And this meal I had almost every day between like the egg scramble and this meal, I had it probably every day. It was one of my favorites. Even my youngest daughter, Zoe, loved it and requested it quite often. Um, so what it technically is, is just kind of like a cheddar wrap, I guess I want to call it like a breakfast kind of wrap. So what I use for the wrap itself is just melted cheddar cheese. And I do that in the oven. And then for the insides, it's just regular bacon, chopped up bacon and some egg scramble. It's really, really that simple, but it tastes absolutely amazing. So let's get started. All right, you guys, first we are going to start just by making our our cheese wrap. Um, so what you're gonna do is just kind of use some shredded cheese and you're going to kind of make it into a circle in order to form like the wrap, okay? So let's get started on that and then we are going to put it in the oven. We're gonna put it at about 400 degrees. We're gonna keep an eye on it though. We're probably only gonna have it in there for about five minutes. I will write this down below because I'm not 100% sure. I've made this so many times, but um, I think I I haven't made it in a long time actually as well, but I think I only leave it in there for like four or five minutes, but I will write the recipe down below. So that's what you're gonna do, you guys. You're gonna put it on some par parchment paper, on a cookie sheet. I have a pizza pan here, and we are gonna put this in the oven, and we are going to have it at 400 degrees is what our oven is going to be at, okay? So let's do that first, and then we will check it on, check on it in about four minutes or so. All right, you guys, while well, that is cooking in the oven, I am just going to fry up one slice of bacon. And then when that is done, then I am going to scramble just one egg in this pan as well too. So let's just wait until this bacon is done and then we'll put in our egg and our seasonings. All right, so our bacon is done and I just beat one egg here and I am just going to put some black pepper in here, a little bit of the pink Himalayan salt and then, of course, you guys already know, we are going to be putting everything but the bagel seasoning in here as well, too. Oh. 
There we go. All right, and then I'm just gonna give that a light mixture. Sorry, a light mix. And then we are going to put this in our same pan that we cooked the bacon. And then we are just going to um, have that scrambled up. All right, then what I like to do is just chop up my bacon in there and then we, are, we will wait until our cheese wrap is done and then I sh will show you guys how to assemble the cheese wrap. All right, you guys, I just took this out of the oven and it was at 400 degrees for eight minutes. So what you want is to just make sure that it's kind of crispy on the outside. You're gonna wanna let it cool for a couple minutes just so that it's easier to move because it is really, really flimsy when it first comes out of the oven. So just wait a couple minutes for it to cool and then we are going to put it on our plate. So we're just gonna give it a couple minutes to cool and then we will move it and then we can assemble our breakfast wrap, I guess we're gonna call it. This is just a recipe I made up kind of along the way, to be honest. Um, there wasn't a recipe out there. I just thought that this really covered all of my macros when I was losing and that's why I came up with it. And it was really, really good and flavorful, so it just kind of stuck. Um, so we are just gonna let that cool and then I will be right back. All right, you guys, it has been a couple minutes. So this is now nice and pliable and not falling apart. So what you're gonna do is just put it on a plate and then just assemble your wrap, however you want to make your wrap. What I do, and I, I love this mixture, is I put on some mayo and I put mayo on the whole entire thing. And there we go. Mayo, and then I just put my egg mixture. Sometimes what I will do is I'll make a mixture of mayonnaise and hot sauce, and then I'll put that on. Uh, but today I'm just gonna put the mayo. And then I put our one egg and our one slice of bacon in the wrap. And you guys, this is so delicious. Like I said, my youngest daughter, she's 18 now, and she absolutely loved this meal. Like she would request it all of the time. I would even have to make her two. That's how good they are, I promise you. So, and then what you're gonna do is then, I usually, what I usually do is I just eat it like a taco, because it's just easiest that way. And so I'll just wrap it up and then just eat it like that. So you will have some of the mayonnaise. It's it's very messy, <laughs> just so you know. But you will have some of the mayonnaise and stuff kind of like seep out of the holes. But this, you guys, is so good. And this is what I ate pretty much for my whole journey between this and the egg scramble that I make. It's an absolutely perfect keto meal. And it'll keep you full. And it fits all of your macros as well, too. So I will put the calories and the total carbs of this meal because all it is is total carbs. And I will put that on the screen right now, you guys. And this is going to be meal number one. And if you haven't tried something like this, you definitely need to. It is absolutely amazing, you guys. Oh, this is so good, you guys. Here's a little close up of meal number one. And it is going to keep you full and satisfied until your next meal. All right, you guys, so for meal number two, I am also going to be making one of my favorite meals that I made all the time when I was losing weight. My whole family actually loved this meal, which made it really, really easy to meal plan because everybody liked it. And it was just a, one of those easy meals that you could just literally make, throw in your oven, and then it would be ready. So um, this is called like, I'm gonna call it, there's a few variations of this on um, like re recipes, I guess you would say. I've seen a few people make it um, different ways though, but I just, once again, I kind of made this recipe up as I went along. So I call this recipe kind of like my um, cheese crusted chicken. <laughs> I'm horrible at thinking up names. That's why I could never have my own cookbook, I swear. But technically what it is, is just some chicken breasts and on top of that, we are going to do a mixture of cheese and mayonnaise and some seasonings. And then we are going to put that on our chicken and put it in the oven. Another really, really simple recipe, but it was a recipe that I absolutely loved because it gave me the right amount of protein and it gave me a good amount of fat. 
So that's one thing when you're starting keto or maybe even if you're halfway through your journey is that you have to find ways to implement your fat because fat is what's going to be the most important thing when you're on keto. So whenever I'm making a meal or whenever I think of that I want to have chicken or if I want to have a steak, I always have to think about a fat source to go along with those because, because those are really lean meats. So you always want to find an additional way to add fat to those meals. So usually for steak, um, one thing that I always add is olive oil. That's a great source of fat. Um, I also will add like some veggies on the side and I'll add like a kind of like a dip as well on the side that either I'll put on my steak or put on my veggies just so that you can kind of incorporate that fat source. Um, because like I said, with lean meat, you're just not getting a lot of, of fat unless you get like um, a well marbled steak cut, then you, they're, you're going to be um, adding to your fat. Um, so that's going to be great. But for this meal that we're making, we need to add the fat because chicken is so lean. So we are going to get started on that. And then we are also going to have with the crusted chicken, we are going to have a side of asparagus. So I love asparagus. Once again, I'm going to add a little bit of fat to it. So let's get started on that meal. All right, you guys. So we are going to get started on dinner. So I had a pretty big chicken breast that I did kind of slice in half because they were so thick and big. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly make the mixture that we are going to put on top of our chicken. So we are going to start out by having some mayonnaise. I always use the Hellman's mayonnaise. I've been using that throughout my whole journey, you guys. So we are going to put quite a bit of the mayo because we want this pretty well covered. And we definitely want a source of fat to go with our chicken as well, too. Then I'm going to add some seasonings. I'm just going to add the Montreal chicken spice that I love to use with my chicken. And we are going to mix that with the mayo. And then just some salt and pepper. You guys can add whatever sort of seasonings that maybe you like to have with your chicken. But these are usually the standards. And the pink Himalayan um, salt as well, too. All right, and then we are just going to stir that up. Then we are going to add some cheese. So I have a little bit of Parmesan cheese left. So I'm actually going to put that um, in here. And then I'm also going to put like, um, I have a mozzarella. So I have a mozzarella cheese blend that I am going to put with it as well too. All right, there we go. So we're going to give this a nice good stir to make sure that it's all well combined. I'm gonna add just a little bit more cheese. All right, and then we would, what we are going to do is we are just going to put this mixture right over our chicken. And I'm going to put my asparagus actually on the same cooking sheet. I know some of you guys don't like cooking chicken with maybe something else on the pan, but I don't mind it. I'm just cooking for myself. I'm going to do it all on one pan. And since these chickens are a little bit, the chicken breasts are a little bit thinner, then they'll probably cook an equal amount of time as the asparagus. Because I do like my asparagus kind of like overcooked I guess you would say so it's nice and soft so I'm just going to put half of this mixture on each of the chicken and then we are going to spread that out and this is what's going to give us our extra fat it gives us a lot of flavor on the chicken and I also find that it keeps the chicken really moist um, there's nothing worse than dry chicken I must say and I always like to have my chicken like with some sort of flavoring, you know, whether it be um, like this or if it's in a some sort of like stir fry or something like that, just make sure that it's well seasoned because you can get kind of sick of chicken awfully quickly, I, I feel anyways. All right, so those are well covered. So we're gonna grab our asparagus. I'm gonna clean it up and then I'm gonna put it over here. We're just gonna make sure that our asparagus is dry because it'll definitely crisp up a lot nicer when it is dry so there we go then what i'm going to do with the asparagus is i'm going to lay it out and i'm going to put some olive oil 
some olive oil on my asparagus and then some seasonings. So just some olive oil. Put that, kind of drizzle that over the asparagus. And then I'm going to put some seasonings. I'm just gonna probably put actually just some salt and pepper. I think that would be good enough. And the pink Himalayan salt. I think that's gonna be good actually. I'm just going to kind of make sure that that's all well covered with all the seasonings and the olive oil so it cooks up really nice. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do later on, I'm actually going to cook this. Um, I think I'm gonna cook it at like 375 for about 20 minutes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take it out of the oven and then I'm gonna put maybe some cheese on top of my asparagus and then I'll finish cooking it for probably like an additional 10 minutes or so. So let's put this in the oven. 375 and we will cook it check on it probably in about 15 minutes all right you guys so i just took this out of the oven i'm just going to um, flip the asparagus and add some cheese on the asparagus and cook it for another five ten minutes now you guys if you want if you don't want to have any more um cheese you guys don't have to do this on your asparagus i just feel like it gives it a little bit more flavor and i love cheese um, but feel free, you don't have to do this. You can just have the roasted asparagus as is. All right, and then that is it. I'm gonna put it back in the oven for about five, 10 more minutes. All right, you guys, this is it. I put it in for about another five minutes and it is done perfectly. I did check the temperature of the chicken. I highly recommend you guys are doing that if you are not. All right, you guys, and this is it. This is going to be um, two meals for me. I'll actually have it for dinner tonight and I will save it for my meal tomorrow because I do, um, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to be leaving today. But anyways, one of my kids will eat this. I guarantee you they love this chicken. So, and since there's cheese on the asparagus, then they'll probably eat that as well. Um, my youngest likes asparagus, my older one, not so much. But regardless, it will be eaten. So let's plate this up and give it a taste test. All right, you guys, let's give this a taste test. I know it's already gonna be delicious because like I said, I made it all the time when I was losing. This was like one of my go-to meals for sure. And it's absolutely perfect. And it's full of flavor and full of fat and it's absolutely delicious. Oh. Mm. This is still one of my favorite meals. If I wanna have a clean keto meal, this is what I make. It's absolutely delicious. And you guys can cook your asparagus. I like my asparagus overcooked. I just like it when it's like really, really soft. I know some people like it when it's like kind of like al dente, I guess. But I all right, you guys, so that is going to be meal number two for me. And I just wanted to show you that I am going to have a uh, diet mug root beer with it as well too. These are one of my favorite, the diet root beer, the diet a w root beer and the diet mug root beer are really really good so i'm going to be having that with my second meal so i will print up the total calories and i will also put the total carbs on the screen for this meal all right you guys it is after dinner time and i also wanted to have a little bit of something sweet i was craving something sweet tonight so i am going to have um i'm gonna have two actually of my homemade fat bombs um i love making these these are um well, they technically are nut free because I'm allergic to all nuts. So I actually use, it's a soy nut butter in replacement of peanut butter. So, um, but you guys can make these with regular peanut butter as well too, whatever kind that you can find that works with you on keto. But I will have the recipe linked down below in a video. Um, or actually, maybe I'll just write it out. I'll actually just write it out because it's, it's only like, I think three or four ingredients. So it's really, really simple. But these are really, really good if you're wanting a sweet tooth, if you have a sweet tooth after dinner. So this is what I am going to have 
for the end of the night. I will put the total amount of calories and the total carbs across the screen right now. Mm. All right, you guys, I am going to end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed my clean keto edition for you guys for what I eat in a day. Like I said, I'm really trying to kind of stay on track. I know with Jimmy and I going away this weekend, there probably will be a few foods that I do indulge. Um, but for the most part, I'm going to try to keep it keto. Um, so let me know down below if you guys would love to see that vlog from maybe Jimmy and I for heading away for the weekend for our anniversary. Like I had said before, I'm going to try to keep it kind of 50-50 with the uh, videos that I put out, I'm gonna try to make half of them probably with total carbs and half of them with net carbs. Although I am trying to stay total carbs and trying to really clean up my keto, even in maintenance, I still will have those days where, you know, I just want a Quest cookie, right? Or I want like a Built Bar or something like that, right? So there will be kind of days that I do like have net carbs and days that I have total carbs, but I will always um, make sure that I put all that information on the screen for you guys. And hopefully it'll give you some ideas for you guys to stay on track on your weight loss journey as well too. And I also wanted to give a thank you for everybody that has been sharing my videos and liking my videos and sending me all of those positive, nice comments, you guys. It makes my day when I see all your comments and just motivation that you guys get from my videos. And it makes me feel so good and it makes me feel good for doing what I do here on YouTube that at least I'm helping one person with some ideas or to keep track on your weight loss journey. That's what I'm here for, you guys. I've been through it all. I've lost over a hundred pounds and now I'm here to help you. And that's why I started this YouTube channel is to share what I ate and what I did in order to lose over a hundred pounds and kind of the ups and downs on my weight loss journey, you guys. So make sure that you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content and make sure that you're hitting that notification bell so that YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.